Our scripture for today is from Exodus chapter 3, a story that I suspect most of you have heard many times. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush. Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you stand is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, to bring them out of that land, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I've also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will come and worship me at this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. The word of the Lord. I wanted to start with this quote from David Wilkerson. When God calls you to something, he is not always calling you to succeed. He's calling you to obey. The success of the calling is up to him. The obedience is up to you. There are lots of stories of people being called into God's service in the Bible. In fact, there's so many of them in the Old Testament. When you're studying at a seminary, that you actually study a form called the call form because they all have similar attributes to them. God calls, people notice, and in every case they say, not me. Have you ever felt God calling you and you say, no. Not me. Somebody in the next department could probably do a better job. It's the very nature of our encounter with God that we know it's God calling us when we feel so weak that we can't do it. And then we know we're on the right track. I've said many times over the years, God will never call you to do something you can do. Because then, what's God got to do? God will always call you to something for which you need God's help in order to complete. Because we are co-workers with Christ, not the other way around. So God calls us to do something. Sometimes it's spectacular, like Moses was called to do. I mean, 
He was called to go into Egypt and bring an entire nation out into a promised land. Now, by some count, there were 600,000 of them. Some count 2 million, though I'm not sure that the wilderness between Egypt and Israel could contain a migration of 2 million people. But there were certainly lots of them. And the first thing Moses said was, who am I that I should go and do that? And God's answer was, I will be with you. No matter what your call is, whatever you feel you need to do for God, God is with you. You know that I harp, harp, harp on this notion when people say, God has abandoned me. I don't know why God's picking on me. And that's exactly the wrong thing. That's a deception from the fiery sulfur place beneath our feet. God is always with us. God promises, I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I go with you. So whatever the call is, whether it's to be nice to the people who serve you food, or whether it's to go and climb some big hill and proclaim something to the world, whatever it might be, God is with you. You are never without God. It is true that at times God may appear to be silent. Even great people in the Old Testament had that experience. But it wasn't that God had left them. It was that God had to work something through them. Now, in this case, the call was a burning bush that wasn't consumed by the fire. Now, that would get most of our attention. We saw a house burning, but... If the house didn't burn down, we would notice that. It says the angel of the Lord came in that fire. Now in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. There was a, a German scholar in the 1800s that proved that, went to every example and demonstrated it was Jesus, because Jesus is the one that appears to us visibly. And it's also why after the angel of the Lord has appeared, that suddenly the conversation is with Jehovah God rather than just the angel of the Lord. And so in this case, Moses turned to look at it, and then it says, the Lord said to him. So when we know Jesus, we know the Father. I mean, that Jesus told us that. Essential to our call to realize we are not alone. That call to obedience is the tough one, because sometimes we feel as though God is calling us to something that's embarrassing, or perhaps that is risky or dangerous. I was just talking to someone yesterday, and <clears throat> forgotten just how it uh, came up, but I said, when I'm reading history and I'm reading about the martyrs, those people who served God to death, in every case, somebody killed them in order to stop the ministry. And in every case, the ministry exploded like a nuclear bomb and took off. Because when people saw how faithful the martyrs were and how serious it was, <coughs> they took it seriously as well. So success in human terms would be if God called you and you died from it, the world wouldn't think you were a success. But in the grand scheme of the kingdom of God, that might be the greatest success you can offer in God's name. And so... God is not calling us to succeed, but calling us to obey. I have to admit, in our culture, that's not a comfortable thing to do because we, in our culture, are taught to be independent, strong, stubborn. 
and that we should never listen to anybody because we're at least as good as everybody else, especially politicians. <clears throat> and yet, it is what we are called to do, obey. Humility is the highest virtue of a follower of Jesus. And I don't mean lying on the ground and letting people step on you. Because doormat and humility are not always the same thing. It means that you are completely comfortable with God getting the credit for what you are going to do. It's a simple definition of humility. You have no problem with God taking and getting the credit for something you are going to do. Burning bush, Moses noticed. He came and it was holy ground around the burning bush where God was calling him. Moses argued with God saying, I'm not the one, and God answered every one of his complaints and provided for those spots where Moses felt weak. And then Moses did it. I hope that today, this week, for the rest of our lives, we will always do what God calls us to do. Amen.
Almighty God, we thank you that you have given a meaning and purpose for each of your children in this world. Thank you that we are never too old, too dried up, too tired, too anything to be outside of your will and your call. We thank you, God, that you call us, sometimes in a loud voice, sometimes in a whisper. And so we ask that you would teach us to hear your voice, your call, when you are needing to speak to us. We thank you for the examples of those who have been called by you. Those in the Old Testament who resisted because they were unable to see their worth. For those in the New Testament who left everything and followed you. We pray, O oh God, for those who do not have or feel a purpose in life. And we thank you that because you have a purpose, that they can find it. We ask that they would learn the secret of obedience instead of success. We pray, O oh God, for those who need special prayers for any reason today, those that we carry in our hearts and minds and in our memories. We lift them up to you together, for where two or three are gathered, you are in the middle. My God, we thank you that we can join together in prayer. And we can even join with the prayer Jesus gave the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
May you hear God's call in everywhere you are at all times. And may you know the joy of the Spirit guiding you in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God the Father, now and forever. Peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you.